It's another fireside chat tonight as we continue to reflect on the 30 years of our democracy. And today we put the spotlight on the judiciary and who uh, but a, a better person or best person to talk to us through that but the Chief Justice Raymond Zondo who has been in our, on the, in our screens in the news for years on end uh, navigating us through many, many issues. And of course, uh, 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 two years ago or so, appointed to the highest office in the judiciary. What does he think about the state of the judiciary? We're going to find out here tonight. And of course, you can tweet us at ENCA, at JJ Tabani, at Power to Truth to join that conversation. Chief Justice, thank you. Thank you so much for, for finally coming to visit us. You've never been here No, I've never all. been here, JJ. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. No, I truly, truly appreciate it. I mean, your story has been very, very fascinating. I wanted to start there. A lot mm. of people who are, you know, who are legal students and so always look up to the higher echelons to say, one day I also want to be one of those 11 judges, etc. Mm. Mm. Your story at your interview a couple mm. of years ago was a fascinating one about how you became a lawyer, etc., mm. etc. Et mm. And then you, you became acting judge of a concord as mm. far back as 2011. Mm. But I always had a, a question that you must answer honestly today. <laughs> Being a chief justice, was that ever your ambition when you started or not? Or you just sort of, in, in a sense, uh, it sort of just occurred to you as you had you know, nearing the end of your your tenure that this is what I want to do. I mean, is it was it your ambition to be a chief justice? Well, it was never my ambition to be chief justice. Actually, you know, um, the former chief justice, okay. uh, Justice Mukwege, and yeah. I talk sometimes that. Uh, when we were at university yeah. and uh, with others, we, which was, of course, during apartheid, yeah. the, the, the highest we thought we would go is being uh, you know, uh, senior lawyers. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, we, we never thought of being judges. Obviously, at apartheid, that couldn't yeah. be in our, in our minds. But even after uh, democracy, I never thought about it until I got a call from the judge president of the labor court yeah. inviting me to go and act and uh, yeah. it was a shock to me I, he was asking me to go and, and be an acting judge yeah i was busy with my partner in the law firm planning how we were going to expand our law firm now that there was democracy yeah. and uh, we were hoping to get work from government as well we had started getting work from uh, mm. the private sector the corporate uh, world we we're planning we we're thinking even of uh, having a branch office in Johannesburg mm. I was not thinking about being a judge you know mm. but um, ultimately after he had uh, approached me and I had spoken to certain people uh, it became difficult uh, to, to say no because yeah. um, at that stage, you will recall, of course, uh, this was 96. This was 96, yeah. uh, about two years after democracy. Um, the judges in, in all the courts, um, um, were in the majority were white, male. Yeah. Uh, of course, the Constitutional Court was uh, different because it was a new court. And uh, there was pressure to say, some of us must make us ourselves available because yeah. if we didn't, uh, what, how would the, the bench change? You know, uh, or would South Africa continue to have just whites as judges? So some of us still wanted to make money in practice at yeah. the time, but um, uh, you know those considerations ultimately yeah. uh, put pressure. Did you on consider to refuse though, as when you were uh, uh, appointed chief justice? Because I asked you two questions. One, you had been for three years. You were you were, you were dealing with the state capture, yeah. which occupied most of your time. In yeah. other words. In a sense, you were almost detached yes. from the day-to-day -day grind of the yeah. Constitutional Court for three years, which is quite yeah. a very long time. Yeah, actually, for, for, for over four years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know? So, uh, did you consider to say no when you were then approached to say, regardless of the four years that you have not been here, mm. etc., and you are doing a, a very important but separate project, mm. that you should did you consider to say no to that mm. N not when i was approached to accept a nomination i didn't yeah. consider to say no at that stage yeah. you asked me earlier on whether yeah. i had uh, wished i had wanted to be chief justice yeah. and when i thought about it i only thought about it after 
I had been appointed Deputy Chief Justice yeah. to say, oh, maybe uh, I could end up being Chief yeah. Justice. But prior to that, I had never thought about, about it. I was just happy to be a yeah. judge in the Constitutional Court and just do my yeah. work. But this last part, you know, the reason I'm asking this question yeah. is... Uh, you had there was a lot of angst yes, right, yes, in yes. this current process. Yeah. And what made things worse was yeah. that the JSE then yeah. recommended somebody else completely yeah. to yeah. the president. Yeah. So in that yes. process, uh, 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 did you consider to say no president? Uh, especially you no, know I especially because you yeah. only have two years to go. Well, uh, this is what I can tell you. When yeah. I was approached uh, and being nominated, yeah. I didn't think about that. But somewhere after I had accepted nomination, yeah. somewhere between that and the actual interviews, yeah. I did consider withdrawing. Yeah. Uh, Reason? Um, well, my uh, reasoning at that time was that during uh, the time of the commission, mm. I thought I had uh, made uh, too many enemies yeah. uh, who might have uh, influence about who would be chief justice yeah and um, and uh, i thought that uh, um, maybe uh, i wasn't going to succeed uh, i didn't think that the number of years that were left were yeah. a, a problem it, it was a question of whether uh, given the uh, enemies I had created yeah. through doing my work in the commission, whether I stood a chance. I, I spoke to two of my friends. I made a special trip to each one of them and, uh, and, and, and talked talk to, talk to them. I said, this is what yeah. I'm thinking. And I told them all my reasoning, you know. Yeah. And they both, they both uh, turned me down. They said, you know, uh, we think there are many people in the country who would like to see you as Chief Justice. Yeah. They would be very disappointed if you were to just withdraw. Yeah. But don't you think that could also mean that you have then put in the, caught in the political crossfire? Because uh, some people, and, and you have, I've, I've, I've never heard you address this, some people may say, yeah, no, this was a reward for him to do this state capture thing, etc. <laughs> You know, and, and just let a couple of people off their hook and so on. Mm. So this, this thing was a reward because if it wasn't, somebody would have said, no, but, you know, the JSC didn't even recommend this fellow. There's a female who is the head of, a, uh, you know, the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. Why can't that lady just take over and you continue, uh, you know, wrapping up whatever? Because the state capture thing is not over. You're still, you know, Marcelo Coco just tweeted now. They say, when are you answering me? <laughs> and the many others say, no, no, but, you know, or others stand up and say, oh, I've been cleared. And then you must do a press conference and say, no, 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 you have not been cleared. It, it's, it's a bit messy. What don't, don't you think it's a no, bit messy? No, no, that no, 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 it is not The messy. relationship no, no. between these two things we had to do. No, no, I, I don't think so. Mm. Because... Um, uh, one, uh, I was uh, at the tail end of the report. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the appointment, the interviews were in February. Yes. The appointment happened on the 10th of March, was announced on the 10th yes. of March. And uh, it started with effect from 1 April. And uh, I finished the last report of the commission yeah. in June. You know, uh, there was something that we did in terms of corrections a little later, but basically, the, uh, so no, no, I, I, I didn't think that the, 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 uh, there was anything messy, messy about it. Yeah. But also, you know, the fact of the matter is, uh, uh, it was also important to make sure that um, one is not seen to give in to people who were putting illegitimate pressure yeah. because uh, of their own agendas. And that interesting uh, you say that because mm. then the JSC, what's your assessment then on the JSC's role? Because mm. um, the JSC is actually meant, and I may be wrong about mm. this, uh, I haven't read my law books too uh, you know, often, <laughs> but uh, the, the JSC is supposed to give the president some options. They didn't. They put, chose one person and the president rejected that option, right? Could it be that there was a sense in which what you are saying about political, on politics and so on, came, may have come into the way of how the JSC was meant to 
objectively assess who could be chief justice and why you just be honest with me about that because a lot of people are worried about the JSE as well from a, well, from different angles yes. you say well you know should politicians be there or it, not etc yeah no 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 <laughs> i think there were some members of the JSC yeah uh, who really didn't want me to be chief justice for uh, for for no, no, not any legitimate reasons um, and, and I think it was connected in regard to some of them, not, not all of them, yeah. to some of them, to my work in the commission. Yeah. Uh, others might not have wanted me, but they might have had genuine reasons, you know, yeah. to, you know, to have their, their own preference. There's nothing wrong with that. Sure. That's fine, you know. So the problem is with those who have illegitimate reasons and who have their own agendas yeah. but if somebody out of x number of candidates uh, prefers this candidate for legitimate reasons yeah. that's fine yes but of course uh, the the JSC was not supposed to um, make any recommendation yeah. the JSC was supposed to simply tell the president whether we were suitable candidates for appointment. Yeah. Uh, one, that's what the letter from the president to the JSC said, that's what he, he, he wanted. And uh, actually, uh, a letter, and I'm able to say this because <laughs> there, 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 there are records that are in the public domain yeah. in court. Uh, there was a letter from the JSC to the president at some stage, yeah. which also said that they were going to advise him on the suitability. Yeah. You know, uh, but it looks so like it didn't somewhere matter. They didn't recommend it, you it, per se. It, it, it look, sorry. It didn't matter. So it didn't matter that they, they didn't, didn't have recommend. to recommend anybody. They just yeah. needed. They needed to say if they thought any one of us was unsuitable, they yeah. would say that. If they thought we were all suitable, yeah. they just needed to say that. That's all. In assessing the thirty years of democracy, uh, though, do you think that the judiciary, uh, you know? can get caught up in politics, like they, they could be in the crossfire of politics. And have you ever felt that way in the whole time that you have been a, a judge and then uh, been a deputy and then been a, 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 chief, a chief justice? Well, uh, what has happened is really simply attacks on, 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 on the judiciary. Mm. Uh, that is what has happened now. Some some of the of the attacks um, are from people who want to delegitimize the judiciary mm. for their own purposes, mm. and uh, of course, some of those people, when they win cases in in court, then on the, on that day the judiciary is not such a so bad, you know. Yeah. So there there are people who don't want the judiciary to be seen as credible and as, legit, as legitimate yeah. and um, they, 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 they make it their job to attack the judiciary. Yeah. But the, on the whole, the judiciary and, and myself, we have tended to just focus on our work and occasionally come up and respond when we need to respond. Do you, been, do you think there are unnecessary strictures, and I want to talk to this about, on this about the, the, uh, after the break. In, mm. in, uh, in a sense, consolidating the independence of the judiciary. Do you think there is unnecessary strictures about what you can and cannot say? I want to talk about that. But the, this issue about political, in, uh, sorry, the, 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 the political interference or vis-a-vis -vis independence of the judiciary yeah. has been a bugbear for a while. In fact, a couple of years ago, just before you, mm. uh, uh, just before you started as a, a, thing, a, a constitutional court judge, oh. there was a big debate about judicial overreach, etc., yes. etc. Et yeah. But I want to start with the issue of our politics. Right? Mm. Do you think there are unnecessary strictures on judges on what they can and cannot say? Because we have seen even your predecessor, mm. uh, who, by the way, said God wanted him to be chief justice, not as modest as you are. He just was clear that the God wanted him to be chief justice. Mm. Right? Mm. He, he, he was able to comment on religious matters. Yeah. Right? Mm. And then uh, during that kind of approach, he got into trouble. When mm. he was commenting about Israel and whatever else, and then ended up being frog marched mm. by mm. Uh, you and your colleagues in the JSC mm. and whatever else, mm. right? Did you have you found yourself in that situation where you have to restrain yourself as a citizen to express your view about what is going on in society? 
Uh, yes, uh, I I don't feel free to uh, uh, express myself publicly yeah. on everything that I otherwise would like to express myself on, and I think that 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 that, that that's how it it, it is with with uh, judges. I think most judges accept that. The problem is just where to draw the line. Yes. Because in the past, um, it used to be said that judges speak only through their judgments. Yes. I think everybody knows that that's been, that's old fashioned. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, you, you can speak publicly, you can do lectures. Yeah. Uh, it depends on the subjects you, yeah. you speak about. And obviously, you have got to avoid speaking or expressing, view, expressing views on matters, on, on, on case on matters that you. might end up before, before yeah. the courts uh, so you just have to to be careful about that yeah. but it certainly has moved away from yeah. the old uh, you know uh, situation yeah. but where that's not even a perfect formula isn't it i mean yeah. media 24 or or, or report yeah. quoted you a couple mm. of years ago as expressing a view that says the, mm. the ANC did well by appointing, by, by electing somebody like Ramaphosa. The whole country obviously yeah. was on tender hooks about who's yeah. going to be the ANC president in, after, after, after Jacob Zuma, etc. Yes, yeah. And you are quoted as, as almost blessing that situation. Yeah. Now, yeah. if you take your formula, yeah. that could have ended in front of you because they, they, these politicians always take each other to court and say your election was illegitimate or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Don't you think that that was a, or, or, or on a thin line just there for you in terms of a citizen expressing a view that probably was shared by many people well well uh, usually people some of the people who refer to to what i said yeah. um, either don't understand the context yeah uh, or they have misunderstood what was the context this this is something that is in the commission's report okay this is something in the commission's report. Yeah. It's in that part of the report where I deal with the uh, capture of the national treasury. Yes. So where I deal with how over a number of years attempts were made to capture the, the national treasure, treasury yes. and um, re resulting uh, at some stage with the dismissal of Minister Nene yes. and the appointment of Mr. Van Royen yeah. and for how two, Mr. Van minutes, Royen yeah. yeah and how Mr. Van Royen appointed people that he said I mean he didn't know or and so on. Yeah. Um, and that, that was that was part of the Gupta capture. And then what the report says is that uh, effectively Zuma, if he was able, because we know that uh, uh, he was campaigning mm. for a certain candidate, mm. now it may be that he hoped that even if he was no longer president, if the person was a, pro a, a president was somebody that he had supported or maybe helped to ascend the presidency, that maybe he would be influential and continue what uh, uh, had happened. But maybe he would not have succeeded because the person would, would have been against that. But the idea was that if um, Zuma continued to have influence mm. in terms of who would be ministers at that stage, there was going to be a risk uh, so of the continuation the, of I the I see. Quota. So in that context, I was saying it was good that in, a, a different person, yes, in this case, Ramaphosa exactly. was elected instead of exactly. whoever the candidate And it could wants. have been another person, it's just that there were two candidates. I see. Only. So it's got nothing to do with anything. Just to say, yeah. out of these events, yeah. this helped because if it hadn't happened this way yeah. and it had happened that way, we might have seen yeah. a very uh, different But you, you, have not say, you have not felt be, being caught up in the crossfire because let's say, for example, now, yeah. uh, with all the angst yeah. that related to Zuma being imprisoned and yeah. refusing to come to you or to come and talk to you at the state capture, etc., mm. his case ends up in front of you now, the case that he's, he's being removed from the ballot now. Yeah. It ends up the electoral court says no and then they appeal to you will mm. you recuse yourself 
at this point where Zuma is concerned? I recuse myself frank. all the time. Whenever yeah. he has a matter in the cultural court, yeah. I recuse myself because yeah. he has litigation going on against me where he's challenging my appointment. Yeah. So there is that litigation. So, so I, I won't sit in a matter yeah. in which uh, he is a, a party. Do you think there's judicial overreach? Let's face this matter once and for all. A couple of um, uh, weeks ago, the, the EFF went to court to say parliament should not chuck, chuck us out and the, the court washed their hands, right? But if you rewind a little bit further, uh, the, the, I think it was the, the EFF and the UDM a couple of years ago went to parliament and forced the speaker of parliament to create a, a situation where there was a, a, a voting by secret, secret ballot yeah. instead of yeah. a show of hands. Yes. Right? Yeah. If you look at those two cases, there's, there's yeah. some inconsistency from what the judges expressed. Yeah. The first part, they were happy to say, yeah, no, no, it must be a secret ballot. The mm. second time they say, no, don't come to here to us with petty things about between you and the parties. They can expel you from the state of the nation. It doesn't matter. Mm. Just clarify me. I mean, where, where should we be standing? There seems well, to be a constant nagging thing of judicial overreach, etc. Well, you see, I don't think that one can make uh, with any justification a general blanket statement that there is judicial overreach. Mm. It is possible that in a particular case, mm. there could be a judicial overreach. But one needs to, to know yeah. what the facts are, what the law is. I can, t I can tell you, yeah. JJ, that um, if, you, if you were to read a lot of judgments of the Constitutional Court mm. uh, over the past 30 years, very often they emphasize the importance of the court respecting the separation of powers. Mm. Almost all the time. But it, we always, it always says there are times where the constitution itself yeah. mandates the, the, the courts to mm. do A, B, C, D. Yeah. Maybe something that would ordinarily not be done by a court, but if the constitution permits it, it the courts will then do it. But somebody who is outside there might not know those um, uh, you know, uh, distinctions yeah. and just say, no, this is a judicial but overreach. Think, uh, but let's put it this way. Mm. Do you think the judiciary is dragged too much into politics? Well, uh, in, in this country, because how many cases do we have where people are going there because they had internal squabbles? Yeah. The Iswa Hashule case being a, a case in point, the recent one that comes to mind. But there were many others. In fact, before, even before that one, mm. ahead of the 2017 uh, conference of the ANC, some pro uh, provinces took the ANC to court to mm. say these people can be delegates and so mm. on. Even in 2012, mm. ahead of the conference, it just happened to be the free state again mm. that was taken to court mm. and whatever, or the ANC won that case and they were chucked out of the conference. Mm. It, st it looks messy. Is, is there something there as we reflect on 30 years that could be mm -hmm. done to try and, 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 and consolidate those Chinese walls yeah. uh, between the three spheres? Well, well I, I, I can tell you that uh, it certainly is my view that there are many cases which are taken to court which could uh, be sorted out without them being taken to court. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a case that was brought to the Constitutional Court a few years ago, uh, just before I went to the commission, actually, yeah. uh, where opposition parties um, came to the Constitutional Court uh, and sought the Constitutional Court to order Parliament to set up a committee mm. that uh, would um, uh, look into allegations of misconduct against President Zuma. Yeah. Uh, I wrote a minority judgment there, uh, and I said that was a matter that should not have been brought to court, mm. uh, certainly at that time. Yeah. Because the evidence that so was... So you defended Zuma? Yeah, no, I said, I, yeah. I said there was no <laughs> I need. I don't think they believe no that need. now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I said the evidence that was put before the court yeah. by the speaker or deputy speaker yeah. was to the effect that the, 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 the majority party in parliament had had a meeting with the opposition parties to talk about what they should do 
about uh, setting up a, a, a committee. Mm. And they had made a lot of progress in the discussions. Mm. And actually, the last meeting was a meeting where, I think, if I recall correctly, opposition parties were being given an opportunity to come up with ideas as to what should be done. Yeah. And uh, the DA uh, members said they needed to talk to their leaders to get a mandate. I think another opposition party, I don't know what they did. And instead of coming back later to say, yeah. this is our mandate about what should happen, they didn't do that. Other parties came to court. So my question was, but you are having meetings there. You have not reached a deadlock. Why are you coming here? You should go back and hold those meetings. Yeah. And there was a complaint that the majority party was uh, abusing its majority. But the facts, were, the facts were, in that particular, on that occasion, they were making progress. There were no disagreements. Yeah. So I said this matter should not have come here. Yeah. These, the opposition parties should have gone back to the meeting and try and reach agreement. But of course, the, the majority uh, yeah. uh, thought different. But definitely, I, I think that there are cases which should be sorted out without... Uh, Within the political sphere. Yes, and not without having... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure whether you, you, you think that your, 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 your judges have the capacity to discern when, when not to interfere then. Because I also talk about, once you talk about the capacity, do you believe that the judiciary, in the, in the way it's set up, from a point of view of resources, accountability to the Ministry of Justice, etc., mm. right, is mm. being facilitated to be able to do his job or is hampered by that setup. Do you have mm. enough money to do what you need to do? Because what we are hearing in terms of judgment, judgments taking years to do, to, to mm. do etc., seems to suggest yeah. a lack of capacity yeah. for whatever reasons. Capacity issues, I mean, is there something mm. to worry about there? Because I remember even uh, ahead of your predecessor mm. ap approaching office, there was also this debate about yeah. should we report into justice, yeah. you know, uh, or should we report directly to parliament, who allocates the funds, yeah. etc. Talk to me about that. Yeah. No, when it comes to resources, uh, we, we have serious problems mm. uh, which affect actually operations of, of, of the courts. And yeah. uh, hence, um, when you talk, when one looks at the backlogs, yeah. part, of, part of the reason for that is a lack of adequate resor resources, yeah. um, which includes not having enough judges, not having enough posts yeah. for judges. Sometimes you, you have posts, but you don't have enough uh, suitable people. Yeah. But sometimes you need posts, and uh, there are too many cases, and um, the costs are not created because when... Um, and there are posts that need to be created. We depend on the executive. Yeah, we've got to. They to, can to, veto that. They, they, if you say it's one, up two to their posts, decision. they can say we only have money for one. Yeah, yeah, they, they can do that. They can do yeah. because but surely we, there must be ground rules that. that says they can't do that. We, 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 we don't control control the money. Yeah. You know, we don't control the money. Uh, it goes to an important issue yeah. uh, on which I've touched publicly, mm. namely the institutional independence of the judiciary. So at the moment, it's not institutionally independent. We are not institutionally independent. Uh, so bureaucrat the bureaucratically, you are you still accountable to another arm of the state. We we, we, we have the we have the office of the chief justice, yeah. where the secretary general is like the director. General, yes. Um, you know, rep rep reports to me and reports to the Minister of, of, of Justice. At the same time? Uh, <laughs> like, is that a dotted line or a straight line to both? Well, in, in the end, the Minister of Justice has more power about... about you can the, give him leave and you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so, that should not be like that. Yeah. That should not be like that. But how when come that has not been sorted out over 30 years? Yeah, I mean... Other countries on, on the continent, some of the countries are far ahead of us, including Namibia, in terms of institutional independence. Yeah. I, had, um, I was uh, in Tanzania towards the end of last year at a meeting of uh, 
the Chief Justices of Southern and Eastern Africa yeah. uh, Forum and uh, we got talking with some of the chief justices about institutional independence yeah. i remember that when i was telling some of them about our situation they were laughing at me because they were saying even us are ahead of you we always thought that south africa would be ahead of us yeah. but when it comes to the, to, to institutional yeah, independence but, but doesn't that reflect on you and your, your 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 colleagues because it means that you have not even proposed a law that can change that no it doesn't mean that it simply yeah. means that we have uh, had a situation where the executive yeah. because in the end they've got to agree they've got to pass the laws uh, to, to go to parliament to pass yeah. the laws uh, has not been keen on this i made uh, in a speech uh, not so long ago i made the point and at the conference of judges in december that in 20 about 2013 we gave uh, the executive uh, a whole document yeah. with our proposals on yeah. institutional independence, what should be changed and so on and so yeah. on. They were supposed to come back to us, but they only came back to us 10 years later, last, last year. Yeah. So throughout that, that time, yeah. and the former Chief Justice just gave up because they yeah, but just that shows the, 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 the level of relationship then it's a very poor one well if you can say to somebody yeah. yes your proposal and then they come to you after 10 years and yeah. it, it doesn't ring the bell anyway no no surely uh, should there should I, have I, been an, should agree. have been an annual touch touching yes, of base between yes, the yes yes yeah. whatever no 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 that it, it does show that but in the end yeah as the judiciary if they if they refuse if they don't want to come to the table yeah. for negotiations you are just faced with that situation which is why it becomes important to tell the public what is happening yeah uh, and it's to say because when we for example yeah. the judiciary might be might be seeing as not performing its job properly yeah. because there are backlogs then they must know that part of the problem is yeah. that we are not in charge of yeah. our own resources but tell me now uh, mm. frankly because yeah. OSD, you know you, you you got not nothing to fear. I want to believe because you know, time is ending. I could tell you nobody anything can fire. anytime. No, <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you anything anytime. Yeah, nobody can fire you. So tell me, right? Do you believe right that the, there is sloppiness on the part of the judiciary? Forget about the fact that there was some money so that there. But I mean, the things mm. that we saw about that judge who was doing the Senzo Mayor case. You know, it could be an example because that case was in a public arena. But there are a lot of people complaining about postponements. Look at the cases of corruption. Sometimes somebody has been in the dock for 20 years, 10 years, right? Mm. Uh, that, that's justice delayed. Mm. Surely there you need to point the finger at the judiciary. No. Including your own court, yeah. where a, a, a couple of people tweeted here to say, you must tell me today, why is it April? And there's not been one judgment from the constitutional court for four months. Yeah. There must be something there to be said about sloppiness on your part. Please tell me let, about let, it. Let, let me, let me t tell you this. Mm. You see, our legal system has different roles for different people. You've got the yeah. police who investigate in the case of criminal matters. You've got the NPA who must decide who, whether to prosecute yeah. or not to prosecute. And then you've got the judges. The judges are the last people. Yeah. So when you take any case, when it's being investigated, the judges are not there. They don't do investigation. Sure. It's with other people. How long they take to investigate... So are you saying that the dragging them. of cases will never be on a judge? Well, I'm, uh, this is what I'm saying. There may be some delays on the part of the judiciary yeah. that may be caused by the judiciary, but I think there would be very few when you look at the whole picture. Are you saying they're not a blip on your radar then in, a, in terms of performance management of the judges? No, 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 I, I, no, no I, 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 don't think, I don't think so at all. Judges, uh, judges work very hard. Yeah. Judges work very hard. But the concord, but surely the that's a different uh, 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 piece of cake there because... We, you know, surely I'm sure you've got a big backlog of cases yes, which we, you, which you, where you must pronounce. We, How can we, four we months have, pass have. and not one of them yeah, are right well, to I pronounce? Don't know, I don't know about whether in four months there was no, no judgment, but I can tell you that yeah. apart from judgments that people maybe uh, see when a judge goes to court and reads a, a judgment, yeah. there are many decisions that are made by judges in the course of court. That are not public. Which, 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 or that are not publicized. For which we don't go to court. 
to yeah. say we are handing down judgment. I see. It's just sent to the parties. Yeah. And those parties know what the decision is. I see what you, you mean. See, yeah. But you see, um, uh, part of the problem with the Constitutional Court, which, yeah. and, and we talked about this uh, recently because there was an issue about so using some retired yeah. judges, is that for every decision that relates to a case that needs to be made, yeah. all 11 judges must take part. Yes. Now, that's, that, that causes a lot of uh, challenges because uh, one, we have quite a big backlog of new applications. Well, at the moment it's not so bad, but we have been working quite hard. New applications that yeah. come in arising out of the expanded jurisdiction that happened about 10 years ago. Now, what, what it means is that I must read every case that my, uh, uh, my other colleagues read, yeah. and we must discuss. Sometimes we disagree. Yeah. Now, when we disagree, we don't take the approach that says, okay, whoever disagrees, that's what they do. You no, try to persuade each other. We try to persuade each, each other. Yeah. And sometimes that, that takes some time. I mean, and you need to strike a balance because you might be quick if you say, okay, who, whoever disagrees goes that way, whoever agrees goes that way. You might have quicker judgments, but they might cause a lot of confusion. Okay. You know, so you have got to try and, and, and discuss and see if you can find each other. But obviously, even that, you mustn't overdo it. Yeah. There, there, there needs to come a Let's time when you draw a line to say, All right. if we haven't agreed up to now, then that's it. Understand. Uh, mm. Before we go to break quickly, as a head of the judiciary, mm. have there been any cases that you can tell me frankly about where uh, uh, you have received complaints about corruption in the judiciary? Because when you read in the press and so on, you, you, there's always this niggling feeling that people, uh, uh, for whatever reason, will always bring up the issue, yeah, but the judges are bought, or that judge was bought by so-and-so, etc. Uh, in fact, judges, some judges were bought by the, by the CR-17. That's why, we, that's why there's a judgment that we can't know what's in those bank statements. There's always some, you know, soundtrack mm. of, of suspicion. Yeah. Can you tell me now, in, on your inbox, is mm. there a complaint about corruption in the judiciary? Mm. Just be frank with us tonight. Okay. Well, I have had, um, there is one case that I can remember where I got correspondence. Yeah from a, a member of the public mm. who was alleging that some corruption had happened in a certain case yeah. in a magistrate's court. Yes. And um, I advised uh, the, 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 the author of that complaint to lodge a complaint with the magistrate's commission. Magistrate yes. commission. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I haven't had anything after anything that. Anything else? I don't know. So all the noise that's happening, don't court. reach your desk to say judges are corrupt, some of them are bored, but not, not people with, are paying judges not, to not a judge in a particular Not with evidence. Oh, but, or it's not with evidence, but it, it's there. I, I do get sometimes correspondents that say there is corruption, whatever, but without the details. The, and if you say... Therefore, what's your conclusion? Your conclusion is that it's all a myth that corruption that is uh, 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 inflicting the rest of society has missed the judiciary. Well, this is what I can say. It mm. is possible that there is some corruption. All I'm simply saying is we invite people to come forward and give us the evidence. Yeah, and, and, that, I'm and so far that has not happened. Yes. Okay. The public, uh, you know, have more mm. than 400 questions. We can oh. only take a sample of four or five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really. right. So quickly, uh, on, on Twitter, um, Zimani says, Why, what, what's your view on criticism that sometimes your commentary, especially on state, state capture issues, can be read as a judicial overreach? And then maybe you can handle the second one as well from uh, grade, at grade one, who says, isn't what's happening now in the country state capture 2.0? And then third, the third one uh, on this first round of tweets, ask him, this is at Marcella Gogo, unfortunately <laughs> there it comes, <laughs> ask him why I have not received the commission and, and he's answering affidavit 15 months after I filed my application for the judicial review of the commission's report. It took just over 12 months for the commission's lawyers to send the record 
That was done after a Rule 30A notice. Okay, start with that one, and then you can give me the answer on the other. Well, Mr. Coco knows that he has got lawyers, yeah. and the commission <laughs> has got lawyers. Yeah. The lawyers should talk. If, he, yeah. if his lawyers want to know, but they know anything, you don't think that the delays he, are he must true. Talk. Well, I'm saying yeah. these matters are handled by lawyers. He yeah. knows if there is anything he doesn't understand, he must ask his lawyers to ask the commission's lawyers and they yeah. will respond. So, but they, they've never brought it to your attention that there is a delay. No, no, no. I know that there is a delay, okay. but I know why there is a delay. Why is, but I'm, why but I'm saying it? this matter is between yeah. lawyers. Let it be handled by so lawyers. So you won't answer that. Yeah, already no. is fine. <laughs> no. Let's talk about is, is what's happening in the country in your view, state capture 2.0. Link this to the fact that you have complaints, it's not, we are not manufacturing. You have complaints, you say, guys, it's been 18 months. The report has cost 1 billion rand. It's five volumes. It's sitting there. Mm. The, the implementation is scant. Mm. Address me on that. Well, I don't know what the, the, the person who sent that question uh, really has in mind when, when he says, is it state not capture state capture Is it a repeat of state capture? Uh, because if you are talking about state capture, you have got to know who is effecting, who is capturing yeah. and who is being captured. You know? yeah. So I'm not sure uh, because she do, he or she doesn't give any facts. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think your, but, your, your commission put the brakes on state capture? In your view, in general terms? I, 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 th I, th I think it did. But um, uh, we have seen that uh, certain things, uh, you know, seem to continue, and that uh, unless uh, those who want to pursue continue with state capture see that um, you know there are serious uh, consequences, yeah. uh, they, they, they will they will continue. So yeah. as a country, we've got to really uh, take a very clear stand. Yeah. That this Absolutely. Is not acceptable. Have you changed your yeah. mind about the fact that there's a little bit of dragging of the feet to implement your recommendations? No. Uh, you have not changed your mind? Yeah, no. I, certainly, there are some measures that are being taken, yeah. but uh, it's very slow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what pushes you, and it goes to the first question now, and mm. you, I really have been curious to ask you here, mm. because they're saying, is it your view uh, uh, that sometimes your comments on state capture can be, you know, read as political overreach? Oh, sorry, judicial overreach. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, but uh, the fact of the matter is uh, I chaired the commission. Yeah. Um, the commission, a lot of money, taxpayers' money was spent on the commission. Yeah. It made the recommendations, and we're supposed to learn, to have lessons that we have from learned there, from it, yes. to, make sure, to make sure that we do things differently. Yeah. I think that uh, it's quite legitimate for me at any time to say, this is what um, uh, I did, this is, these are the lessons we are supposed to have learned, yes. but I see that uh, we might have a repeat if that is what I think might, uh, might happen. Yeah. There, there is nothing uh, you know, of an overreach there, it's the former chairperson of the commission talking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what pushes you to uh, call a press conference and actually rebuke something that is said by, by uh, you know, somebody in the executive? Like in this case, two weeks ago, you, you came out on a Monday and just said, no, but this is it's not true that uh, Gwede Mantashe has taken this thing on review, etc. Uh, is it, uh, in, a, in other words, did you find that ne necessary, necessary or that could have simply shown itself when the time comes for to be in court and everybody could see that you know, these papers either were not lodged or in fact nobody has cleared him. Just clarify that because a lot of people are criticizing you to say yeah. there's too much press involvement and talking in the public. No, no, I think uh, people who say that, uh, you know, uh, either don't watch me properly, I mean, uh, except where journalists want to talk to me when I'm at a conference or something. Yeah. I haven't given an interview for a very lo long time. Yeah. Uh, no, I ne we needed to uh, put the record straight in yes. relation to Mr. Mantasha. Yes. Because the city press was actually saying you, you a report has been set aside, yeah. which was wrong. Yeah. So why it's, should it's I not, not correct aside. that? Yeah. yeah. Why should I not correct that? Yeah. Because... So nobody has successfully taken you on review in all the people who have been mentioned in the report so far? No, no, not at all. Not, actually, not even actually, one? Not even one. Actually, just this past week, uh, yeah. this past week, one of, one of those who had launched an application um, against the commission 
Mr. Mashaba, the one who had refused to comply with a summons yeah. after Mr. Zuma had walked out of the commission. He had been issued with a summons. He refused to comply with the commission, laid a criminal complaint. He subsequently launched an application in the High Court challenging the summons and challenging our decisions. Just last week, he has withdrawn that application and tendered our course on a yeah. and client basis. Yeah. Last question. I'm sure you'd have expected this. A lot of people thinking the, 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 the contempt of court a, a sentence or punishment was, was too heavy because this, he's not the only, Zuma is not the only person who refused to come to your commission. Your brief comment on that? No, no, no. no. The others you didn't punish so, so badly. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. I mean, you're causing the guy electoral election ballot uh, presence now. <laughs> Mr. 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 Zuma <laughs> defied the summons. Yeah. And um, what you do with anybody who defies the summons is uh, either you lay a, a criminal complaint or yeah. bring contempt of court proceedings. That's what we did. And uh, I, I'm very comfortable with the yeah, decision I took. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the other people who defied didn't defy a summon. But Nobody tell, else. Tell me who. <laughs> who what are you gonna do after retirement? Because I've just said who. who yeah. <laughs> what are you doing after retirement? Well, I, Briefly. The, the first uh, twelve months I want to to rest. Okay. And uh, maybe travel, yeah. and then after that I can see. But mostly I just want to rest because since the commission, yeah. I've never had time to yeah, go and rest. Day. Yeah. Right. But thank you so much for coming here through tonight and engaging. Mm. We hope to talk to you before you leave office yeah. at some point. Just yeah. uh, uh, now, that to be the real exit, exit interview. interview. <laughs> tonight was just to say, help us reflect on 30 years yeah. of democracy. No, thank we you really very appreciate much. your, your no, time tonight. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you right. very much. Thank you so much. Thank That's you. the thank Chief you. Justice Raymond Zondo, who gave you a reflection. Do you, do you believe him? Do you think he's done a good job in his tenure uh, as both as DCJ and as Chief Justice? Do you, do you, do you do, are you convinced about some of his responses about judicial overreach and the balance uh, between all of our state institutions? you be the judge of that. But until we talk frankly again, may God bless you.